Welcome to Chef's Special. Today we've got Executive Chef of the Regatta Hotel, Simon Street, joining us to cook some lovely beef. Simon, Thanks, welcome. Sure. Great to be here. Thanks. What are we us. going to be doing? We're going to do a spiced up strip loin, Lovely. serve it with a lightly pickled salad, um, really fresh zingy, mm. and um, basically just get away from the typical, you know, gravy and yeah, potato sure. type dish that you'd have at home. Sounds fantastic. So look at this beef, 150 day, grain fed. I know that it just won the uh, open class at the Royal Queensland Food and Wine Show. So really, we're talking the best of the best here. Absolutely, I'm a massive fan. Um, Marble Score 2 Plus, that's what we say mm. in the business. Um, we see that beautiful intramuscular fat on it. Yeah, it yeah. eats beautifully um, and it's a great cut of beef mm. to cook at home, being a single muscle, the yeah. strip loin. And it's, um, it's one of my favourite cuts as well because it's got a bit of fat on it. So for people at home, what, what are the things that they're looking for when they want to choose a piece of beef to cook on the grill? I guess with this strip yeah. loin in particular, we're looking for a nice sort of fat coverage mm. um, across the top, nice sort of fat layer. And um, we're looking for that, as I said, sort of intramuscular fat. That's going to melt down, render down yeah, when yeah. we cook. And it's going to obviously enhance the steak, give it flavour and keep it moist as well. So is this one of your favourite favorite cuts? It is. We feature yeah. it at the restaurant and it's um, it's eating beautifully and has done for a while. And it's a great yeah, product. It's a very, great. very consistent product for our, our guests out there. Do they need to get this cut at the butcher or is it something they can do themselves? I'd certainly recommend it. The butchers are there for that reason. Yep. Um, pop down to your butcher, have a chat with them. They'll cut it at different sizes for yeah, you. Sure. They've normally got the um, the edge on that than doing it at home. So what's our first step, chef, with our beef? So first step is very important. Obviously, we get it out of the fridge ahead of time. So we've had mm. that out. You know, you sort of want your steak out for a minimum of half an hour, losing that yep. fridge chill. Yep. And um, we're sort of at that point now. And we'll sort of mm. season it up and basically get a bit of a dry rub on it. So we, are we doing that? To, how, why are we pulling it out of the fridge? That's just to help even cooking. So there's a hot tip. Make sure that you pull the beef out of the fridge, give it half an hour to 40 minutes, just to come up to room temperature to really help that cooking process. Absolutely. Chef, we're going to it now. spice it up here. So this is our Ras Al Hanout that we've got. It's a Lebanese um, inspired spice. Beautiful sort of cardamom, turmeric, mm. paprika, nutmeg, those sort of flavors. Yep. Really adds another level. So we're basically just going to season quite liberally like we would salt or pepper all over the, the side of the meat. We'll also hit it with a bit of um, salt and pepper as well at this point, just to get that going. So we use a little bit less pepper than we would salt because pepper tends to burn. And once we've done that liberally, we'll sort of pat it all in and I guess turn over and repeat on both sides. Lovely. All right, so Chef, I see we're putting on a fair bit of spice here. Absolutely. Yeah. Is that is that a normal thing you would do? It likes salt, pepper, spice, mm. all that stuff helps develop crust. So yeah, we yeah. put quite a liberal amount on there just to sort of help develop that deep crust when we sear it. Fantastic. And it's all flavour as well, which is obviously important. Yeah. So both sides of the steak as well is epically important. And we just give that, as I said, a bit of a dry rub now and we'll let that yeah. dry marinate sort of mm. until we're ready to cook. So I can see also here, Chef, that the first two steaks that we've marinated are already starting to absorb those flavours. Absolutely. You know, it's, this is not so dry anymore, and that's only a minute or so. Absolutely, and obviously yeah. the salt as well is sort of a, a dry brining type method as yeah. well, which yeah. is, is very good for steaks, you know, season slightly mm. before you're going to use it. So is that that's probably the key then to making sure that you season it in advance? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. at least, you know, sort of five to ten minutes before you're going to cook it is, is Great. perfect, yeah. All right, so, um, our beef is seasoned, we've got our grill on, time to make our salad? Absolutely, we'll crack on with a pickled tomato salad. Beautiful, let's do it. We'll start off, I guess, just with a pickling, really simple pickling mm. liquid. So we've got some red wine vinegar here, Yep. got about 200 mils. Let's we'll throw that into a bowl over there, and um, we've just got some salt and some sugar. So okay. really simple, we go a bit heavier on the sugar, about mm. 60 grams to that sort of um, 200 mil and just some very fine salt as well so it's a fairly similar quantity of each yeah probably a bit less of the of the salt just yeah. to sort of balance it out so it's not too salty we'll okay. just give that a quick little dissolve then we'll reserve that to the side just while we mm. prep up our vegetables as well okay sure all right so next step cutting some veggies absolutely so we've got all these right. beautiful little heirloom tomatoes that will um We'll just cut up depending on the size of them. So, mm. you know, I like to leave some whole. You know, when we've got really small ones like this, we'll just pop them straight into the pickle brine like that. And then mm. some of the bigger ones, you know, I like to cut them up into different shapes as well. So, sure. we'll sort of do rounds, halves, yeah. you know, whatever we feel like, I guess, at the end of the day. And it adds some different texture and dynamic yeah, to the salad. Look. 
these beautiful colours as well, they all sort of come through. Local produce, you know, we're, we're so lucky here in, in Queensland, you know, we've got the Lockyer Valley on our doorstep, the scenic rim. So we're going to put some of this onion in here as Absolutely. well, Chef? we'll fine slice that red onion as well, yeah. that'll be great. So this is a this is a cold pickle, chef. So we're not cooking this one. Absolutely, yeah. So like I, I like to call it just a really quick pickle, basically. Yeah. It's um, you know, something we throw together. It, it does the job. It, it adds flavour in another level. That's looking great, chef. So we've got some thicker sort of slices of the cucumber. We'll throw in there as well. And we just sort of plonk all that in and um, leave that to the side. We'll give it a little bit of a, a, bit bit of a mix up as well. And you'll see all those beautiful veggies will start wilting down and softening as they pickle. So about 10 minutes, Chef, you want to let that yeah, that's all absorb needs, those yeah. flavours and tick along? Absolutely, and that'll give okay. us enough time to sear off our beef and right. bring the rest of the dish together. We've got these that have come up to room temperature now, as we said. We'll hit it with mm. a bit of oil just on the, um, on the meat. I prefer to oil mm. the meat as opposed to our cooking surface. Yep. And we'll just sort of pat that in Is as well. Is there a reason for that, Chef? Yeah, look, I find um, putting it on a cooking or a hot surface changes the flavour of oil. Yeah, so, yeah, you know, yeah. I prefer to oil the meat or the protein um, mm. and let that sort of hit the grill as opposed to the other way around. So we've got them oiled. Now what we're going to do, something different with this cut, we'll start rendering that fat down. That's going to be the biggest challenge is getting that mm. editable. So what we'll do is we'll get that ready. And by doing that, we just throw it on the grill sort of standing up that way. You can do sort of, they sort of rest mm. on themselves. Yep. And sometimes you need to use the tongs, I guess, to sort of hold it. And smell those spices already. Absolutely, yeah. Okay, so that's just that's just cooking off a little bit of that fat, Absolutely. starting to render down. You'll see all that fat start yeah. leaching out now. So normally, chef, in this stage, you know, you look at how how long are we looking? At? Look, just a couple of minutes. I think mm. it depends on how thick it is. We've got you know reasonably good coverage of fat here, so yep. you can see here already we're getting some sort of melting Maillard reaction here mm. on the on the fat. So we'll give it sort of another minute or so on that, and then we'll look at using this really hot part of our grill mm. to um, sear the both sides, the flesh yep, side of it, yep. and that'll caramelise quite quickly with the, mm. with the spice as well. Alright, so they're nicely rendered now. You'll be able to see they've got some beautiful colour, and we're just mm. going to start searing now all the flesh. Yep. So you see, we want ripping hot sort of surface, that's, mm. that's what we we'll always go for there. So we're really looking for that, I, I keep drawing back to I guess mm. the Maillard reaction that I call it, where you really want to see that caramelisation on the yep. meat, that, that's what builds the flavour. And, the spice rub that we've got on it is going to really help it crust up and get, mm. you know, pretty gnarly as well in terms yep. of deep, rich colour. So, so you you're looking to get... Almost immediately it's yeah, starting yeah. then. So we want that crust and then on the inside nice and juicy. Yeah, exactly. You know, sealing right. everything in. We've also got a little bit of that beef fat here that from the rendered that mm. we can obviously incorporate into the steak. I can tell you that the, the smells coming off the grill, we've got the, the smokiness from the Raz Halanut. It's a little bit of spice and those deep, rich, caramelised beef flavours are really starting to pop. And we'll give these a flip now, so we've got some gnarly sort of caramelisation there. So at the Regatta Chef, on a, on a busy week, how many steaks do you think would go through your kitchen? Oh, absolutely. So on a busy week, we're sort of doing around 2,500 steaks. Yeah, so um, um, if anybody knows how to cook a piece of yeah. meat, you're the man. Absolutely. We've got about 16 cuts on the menu as well, so yeah. you can imagine the grill at the Regatta, it gets pretty, pretty hectic yeah, in there, that's yeah, for, for sure. sure. Fantastic. So while they're resting, we'll look at um, getting some flatbreads on as well, which will be a bit okay. of a garnish and a bit of a textural element to our, sure. um, our salad. So Simon, we're going to give the steaks a bit of a flash back under the hot plate? Absolutely. Then we'll plate up. We'll bring them up to our desired temperature. Like I said, I like to mm. eat about medium rare. So we'll get all these steaks back on. They've rested now for you know a good mm. sort of time. And that'll release all the juices slowly. And that'll give us time as well, just to finish off our, yep. our plating and you know make it as carefree mm. as possible. So Okay. So good good tip there for the home cooks. Whilst this is back on the grill, you want to start putting your salad together. So what do you think, Simon? Are they, are they ready to go? They're good to go. So we've done the resting, we've done all the cooking. Mm. 
we'll get ready to slice these up and finish our dish. So that was really good. So we'll just slice it into sort of three or four, depending the yeah. the, the, the size of the steak. Look at that, beautiful. So we got a nice sort of hue, and we'll just sort of garnish mm. our platter around. Yeah, so medium, mm. medium to medium rare, you know, yep. beautiful, still blushing. We've got sort of some nice pink hues coming through the meat. So we've got like a beautiful blushing mm. piece of meat here, well rested, you'll see it's yeah. quite evenly cooked and you've got that beautiful moisture still inside the steak. And really, Chef, to get the most out of this, out of a piece of beef like this, you don't really want to be cooking it too much more than this, do you? No, you definitely don't. It'll, it'll just dry out and you'll sort of lose yeah. that flavour and toughness as well. So once we're happy with sort of how much we've got on there, depending on how many people we're, we're feeding, it's, um, it's ready just for a, probably a bit of parsley garnish just to finish Fantastic. off. And that also adds a yeah. nice sort of freshness and, and earthy notes to it we'll just sort of tear that we don't even worry about chopping it because we want it to be quite fresh yep and that's our sort of it's upper done. market flavor packed barbecue looks amazing how good is this chef fantastic i can't wait to get into it a couple of beers we've got slipstream tropical ale you know they've won the people's choice awards at the royal beer awards fantastic let's get into it Cheers. <laughs> Delicious.